Uh, Rich is now going to introduce us to the challenge of maintaining the productive capacity uh, of the ocean while uh, protecting the ecosystems within it. Rich, over to you, five minutes. Okay, so thank you. Um, uh, thank you, Merrick, for setting up coral reefs. I'm claiming those. Uh, they're, they're a biological problem. Um, I also noticed that you, uh, that you, you said something about sea level rise as well, so um, I guess that emphasised the point the lady was making earlier about the interrelated nature of it. So the productive capacity of ocean ecosystems. This yeah. <clears throat> this is a set of ocean ecosystems. All of this, this beauty, um, this diversity, this is the ocean ecosystems that I'm here to persuade you it's crucially important to invest uh, taxpayers' dollars, taxpayers' pounds into studying. So these range from uh, charismatic megafauna, whales, uh, manatees, through to coral reefs, through to mangrove swamps, through to seagrass meadows, through to the microbiota that live in the surface of the ocean, through to the, uh, the satellite uh, images that we see that can map these uh, populations of organisms at global scale. And all of this diversity and beauty um, and interest uh, is, is hugely important for our, for our well-being as a society in a whole number of different ways. Um, and I'm going to unpack some of those now for you uh, just to try and convince you that it's worth investing in studying this work. So why is marine biodiversity important? Well, one of the most important things that that biological system that I just showed you does is regulate our climate. Merrick mentioned that 93% uh, of the, uh, the heat is in the ocean interior. Well, the oceans also store an enormous amount of carbon. If that carbon wasn't in the ocean, it would be in the atmosphere. And the biological, the biological term is storing about half as much carbon as uh, is in the atmosphere already. So in other words, if the oceans had no biology in, Carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere would be vastly higher than they are today, and the climate would be a very different space. So we rely on these unseen small organisms growing, living, dying, sleeping <coughs> every day without knowing that we're doing it. So they regulate our climate. They've got enormous potential for new products that can, uh, that can help us um, uh, eat more, uh, live more healthy and longer lives, uh, nutraceuticals, um, potential uh, uh, medicines from the, from the sea, um, and in addition, uh, we eat an enormous amount of animal protein derived from fish. Um, the the uh, wild caught fish um, are, are hugely important, but also as important is the um, captured fisheries, uh, so that's ponds um, and salmon farms, um, a very large fraction of the salmon that you eat is actually uh, farmed within the coastal zone. Aesthetic and cultural values. People really like living by the ocean. If you live by the ocean, then you live longer. Um, so we, we derive an enormous amount of intangible benefits simply from being by the ocean. And we like looking at a beautiful ocean, and part of that is the biological systems. And then, of course, all of the above drives the economy. So the ocean is so important that um, that if it, if it was, a, if it was a, a country in its own right, it would be very high up our, our, list of, um, our list of economically and productive countries. So it's valuable, it supports people, it makes people happy, it has resources that we use. Here's, so and as a result, people are beginning to cost it. So the economic importance of coastal and marine resources to tourism in Barbados. So at a local scale, at a national scale, at an international scale, people are thinking, wow, the ocean really matters and really is a, a valuable thing for us. And the ocean's under threat, and this is why we need research. So we've got this enormous array of really valuable things that the ocean does for us. Um, we're beginning to quantify how much that costs or how much that saves us, or how much money we need to invest to make it the way it is, and these are the threats that are threatening it. So you can see a coral reef entangled with fishing line. You can see beach litter. You can see oil spills. You can see overfishing. All of these activities are um, potentially damaging uh, the services and goods that we rely <coughs> on in the ocean, many of which are biological in nature. As a result, there's an enormous goodwill and uh, sway of goodwill towards um, protecting the ocean. Um, there's a, a vast NGO um, there's a vast NGO pressure to, uh, to defend the ocean, um, and this is good in some ways. On the other hand, what it means is that we need data to underpin these sorts of activities. 
So NOC doesn't advocate for any of these, but this is taking place in the background. And our view is that to support, to support the, that we need to invest money in, in the impartial gathering of the evidence base so that activities by these can be evaluated by government um, based on hard science and good data and good facts. And I would urge you to invest in the biological aspect of that uh, so that we can kind of protect our oceans going forward. Thank you. Thank you.